Right, so we have this great tutorial on Envato Tuts, and uh, it is by Laura. And there are great step-by-step -step instructions with screenshots on this post, this tutorial. And I am going to record myself doing it so you can also see it in practice. All right, so our final project is this womanupmovement.com poster. So we have this beautiful serif font that is intertwined with the flowers. And we're doing this in Photoshop, so we're working with masking and the pen tool and the brush tool. And what I also love about this is it's a great example of using type as um, as line and that it's being turned on its side rather than stacked vertically which is a type faux pas. All right so we're going to use Playfair Display and Open Sans which are two Google fonts. If you don't have them you can click these links and go ahead and download them to your computer. We're also going to use this flower photo by Charlie on Unsplash. So I'm going to open the link in a new window it has download free. I'm going to go ahead and get the original size and that is downloading to my desktop. Okay, so step one, open the flower photo in Photoshop. I'm going to double click. That opens in Photoshop for me. I'm going to go ahead and adjust my screen. So that I can have both windows visible. All right. Okay, so step two, we need to remove the background before using the flowers on the poster. So the instructions are to duplicate the background and we're going to hide the visibility of the background. So window layers, if you already have it up, window layers or F7. You can select your layer and say duplicate layer. And visibility is the eyeball here on the left. So we're turning off the background. Moving to step three. <clears throat> so we have a new layer. So our duplicated layer. And then we are going to um, Add a layer mask. So a layer mask is this rectangle with the circle in it. When you click it without doing anything, you just get this white piece of paper um, covering. So this is the icon. Now, the technique that is used in this blog is using the brush tool with black. So black painted on white means that whatever is in the white is what is shown and the black is hiding. And because we have our background layer turned off, we're gonna see transparency, which is this grid, this checkered gray and white means transparency. All right, so if we use our brush tool and we look at our colors, we're gonna make them go to white and black and we're gonna paint our fill with black. So I use this arrow button. And you want to make sure that you are in your mask, so that's what's selected. Um, your brush tool, when you click on brush, it will give you a panel up at the top and uh, you can select the size so you can see the pixel size adjust. Uh, the default settings is that your brush will actually show as the tip of your brush, so a circle. And you can start, 
So when you are painting white in your mask, um, you can see here the black is happening. That is what is hiding. So we are hiding the background with this really kind of rough go around with the brush. What's important about the brush settings is that it's 100%, it's a hard brush, so I'm not getting a really gradiented edge or anything. Okay, now the beauty is, if you mess up, you can switch your color so that you're painting with white and you can paint it back. So what's great about using a mask is that you are not actually removing any of the pixels from the photo, you are just hiding and showing in this mask. So that's great for if you cut off a piece of the flower and you want to show it again. All right, so the tutorial continues by saying, um, that you're gonna keep erasing and showing using the brush tool and that you can use um, a layer mask if you would like to even show. Um, so the back tick is under your delete button or it's also with your straight up and down line so it helps to show what is deleted uh, so now you can see I just accidentally painted on the picture I'm gonna undo go back to the mask you can see it helps you to kind of just see the boundary really well um, so the idea would be using your brush tool I would change the size smaller. I would zoom in. And I would come around and just really follow. So I find this really difficult to do, especially if you're using a mouse. Now I use a wand, but I still find it hard to come in and get it really nice. So what I would recommend doing instead, I'm gonna turn off this layer. I'm gonna duplicate our back one again. Turn it on. And I would use the pen tool. And I find that if I do little tiny clicks all the way around, that I'm going to get a much nicer cutout. And if I try not to have to add extra curves and precision, if I just stay close enough as I click slowly all the way around, I find that my um, cutout looks much, much nicer than using the brush tool. So I'm going to kind of sit here quietly as I click all the way around. So I'm making a path, which is um, one of the vector uh, tools in Photoshop. And by zooming in and carefully clicking as I go, I'm going to make a much smoother path uh, and boundary between my flowers and the background for this poster. You can use your space bar on the keyboard to turn your pen tool into a hand to keep moving your picture so that your focal point of where you're using the pen tool is closer to the center of your screen. You can zoom in where needed. Doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but the closer you can kind of keep them um, so that you're getting less of the black background, the better.
You can always edit undo if you need to. And go back a couple clicks. All right, so the most important part is that your last click needs to align with your first click and that you will see a circle at the bottom right of your pen tool. As soon as, you, as you've closed the path, if you go to Window, Paths, you're going to see your work path. This work path will not save with your file until you double click on it and save it. So we're going to say Outline Flower. Oh my goodness, I spelled it wrong. All right, once it has a name, you know that it's saved. All right, so if you have your path and you say make selection, new selection, it will give you marching ants. Now, if you look at your layer, you can turn those marching ants into a mask. So by default, I just said make selection. When I click the mask, you'll see it did the opposite of what I was trying to do. So let's undo Command Z. You can say select inverse, and now you can see the marching ants are just around the flowers. So this time when I use my mask tool, I have just the flowers. All right, so you'll see that in the picture, they also went ahead and um, have transparency for many of the dark areas between the flowers. So let's go ahead and do that next as well. I'm going to use the same technique. And we can always come and remove more if we need to once we get going further. All right, so these are again, if you can't see it, you're going to bring up your window paths. They're in this work path. You can double click to save the path. You can click this icon, select, it has the dash circle or the marching ants. Um, you can see that selection is the outside and the shape. So now I'm gonna say select inverse so that I'm getting just those shapes. And in the same mask, we see that black is hiding, white is showing. So if I'm in that mask and I say edit fill with black, it now will hide that, right? So I've just added, um, almost like painting more um, more black to that mask all right let's go ahead and save so I'm gonna say file save as desktop flower mask Photoshop document so it's an editable layered flower file here okay Two. how to set up a new document and create guide so we're gonna go into Photoshop we're gonna say file new we're gonna name the document woman up set the width to 1275 by 1650 uh, 72 dpi let's go ahead and do 150 so no matter what this can be crisp if you're just printing it on your desktop computer but we're gonna keep the same ratio so 1275 1650, 150, and then we're going to call it Woman Up. All right. Now mine was set to be black, and I think we are actually using a black background anyway, um, so that is fine. If you didn't, you could use the paint bucket tool or you can say edit fill and you can pick your color black. All right, we're going to activate the rulers. So I already have my rulers on. They're from the left and right. You can turn them on and off by doing command R. If you click and drag, that's how you bring a ruler in and you can drag it back off your screen as well. We're going to be inches, which we already are. If you are not in inches, you can go Photoshop preferences, um, units and rulers. And this is where you would change from pixels, inches, points, any of the units of measurement. Okay, so we are going to click on the rulers and drag towards the page to create guidelines one inch on each side. 
All right, so I can see here's my zero, here's my one. So I'm gonna drag it down, it kind of jumps to the one. Beautiful. Here as well, I am dragging it out to the one. That's eight and a half, so I'm gonna go to seven and a half. This is 11, so I'm gonna go to 10. All right, so now we have our guides. And so they don't move, we can go to view lock guides. So now I can't accidentally move them out of the way. All right, how to duplicate layers. We will duplicate the cleaned up flower layer into the new file to do so. Select the layer, right click duplicate layer. Under as, change the name to flowers and select document woman up. All right, so if we go here, I can say duplicate layer and destination, I'm in flower mask, but I can change it to woman up and I can call it flowers and say, okay, okay. And now I have magically put my layers into this file. Isn't that neat? Okay. The flowers are larger than we need, so we're going to resize them. We need to maintain aspect ratio. We never want to accidentally stretch. So never grab from this side. Always grab from the corner. And hold down shift if you need to. Sometimes you might already have it locked, your constraints. Um, so you can see I have, here we go, I can show you right here. My width and height are locked so that I uh, could type in 30% here and it is constraining the proportions so both vertically and horizontally, it's sizing it to 30. If you unlocked that, you could stretch. So I could make this 35, right? Or this could be 100 and you can see the stretching. So we want it to always be locked so that you do not stretch your images and you lock it by clicking the chain link there. All right, so we have that placed. So we center the image on the poster, align vertical. Okay, so I have this selected. You can see the bounding box and we have window, um, See if my line is already out. Having my split screen is making it so nothing is where I'm used to it for this recording, which isn't that helpful. Where is it saying? Head over to the options bar. I'm not seeing my full options up there. Oh, you know what? If we select it with our selection arrow, and then we can say, um, let's see. Here, instead of align to selection, align to canvas, and now we can do our vertically center. So we're just about there anyways. And honestly, if you use your mouse, uh, there's great guides in Photoshop, and you can see that this is also centered, and it's showing me that with the um, magenta lines. Okay, we're gonna add text layers. So we're gonna use character. And um, what is it having us do? Woman up. So we are going to character. All right. And we're going to say woman up. I'm going to click into it and I can see my color is black, so I'm going to need to change that to white. And uh, Woman Up is going to be in Play Fair Display. And 
one's going to be really big. You want to make sure it's constrained and you're always pulling from the side, from the diagonal corner, not the horizontal side. Okay, we also need this date, and that's going to be a second line of text. Right, so it's 1007 dash. 2017. It looks like we are aligning that with the left of DW. And it's coming to about the middle of the M, so that does need to be a little bit smaller. And woman up could actually even be bold, it looks like. And it's two lines, so we're gonna split it, select, left align, and we're going to make it tighter line spacing or the letting, so we'll do like 130, maybe even closer, 115. How much close? Yeah, it's pretty close there. Okay, so we're gonna do 100. Mm -hmm, that's good. All right, and even larger. Okay, now you can use the arrow when it's selected to move it tighter. You can shift click, so I'm holding down shift on my keyboard. I'm grabbing both text boxes, which you can see are actually layers as well. So I have two layers selected. If I put my mouse over in the corner, I get the rotate, so I can rotate. Hold shift and it will help pop it vertical for you. And our goal is that it is going to basically touch the guides that we made with our rulers. So I can make it a little larger and about like that. All right, looks pretty good. Next, we're going to add the website URL, and this is adding balance, so it's giving us another element that um, brings your eye over to the corner. Um, and we are going to use Open Songs, and the website is womanupmovement.com. Notice you don't have to put www in the beginning. can select this, choose open, sans, we'll do a bold, maybe a regular, we'll make it smaller. Actually, I will do bold. We're going to rotate from the side. Again, you want it to read the same direction and we'll center it over in that corner. Beautiful. Okay, now we're moving to mask layers. So to create an illusion that the text is interwoven with the flowers, we're gonna duplicate the flower again. So you can see that in the layers palette, you have the black background, you have your flowers, the text is on top, and then the flowers is another layer, kind of sandwiching it. So here I'm gonna say duplicate. I'm in my document, warm up, woman up. Okay, and I can just drag the layer to the top. So now it's perfectly aligned, but there's two flowers, right? Okay. So we want to work on the new flower layer and only on the layer mask. Again, we're just hiding and showing. Um, let's do a brush that's 30 pixels with a hardness of 100. All right, so 30 pixels. So that is the circle radius, so I'm gonna click Make sure I'm clicking into my mask up at the top so I can see my circle. All right, and when I'm in this fly down panel, I can see my hardness is 100, which means it's a full circle that I'm doing. There's not any kind of gradient happening. So you can interchange between black and white by pressing X. And basically what you can see is where you want 
a number or a letter to show through, you're going to remove the part of the flower there. All right, so I am actually going to grab this layer and command shift to this layer and we're going to move the flowers down a bit because in the picture they're actually just barely touching over the A. All right and now I'm going to grab I'm shift clicking all of my text and I'm actually going to move it a little bit as well. Okay so now everything's aligned. Now, sometimes I find it helpful to bring the opacity down of the layer that I am masking so that I can see what I'm doing. So in this case, we want, what letters did they do? Um, let's see here. What is covering the text and what is not? you can change your opacity. So if we're looking here, we want, oh, or maybe, maybe this even makes it a little easier if I'm following. So it looks like it's kind of close there. And then this text kind of aligns more. If it is, if we want the one and the seven to be on top, then we're going to come into this mask and I'm going to bring the opacity down and I'm going to, white is showing, black is hiding, right? So I want it to be black and I actually need it smaller to get in there. See, I could start to um, to fill that. I think it's really hard to do this type of thing with just a brush, um, especially to make it look really good. Like you can make it look pretty close, like that worked. But this is a really small feet of the uh, of the one. So one thing that you can do is if you hold Command and click on your layer. Let me see Option. Let me see why is it not doing. Okay, yes. So you want to click command but on the T. Okay, so that gives me marching ants around whatever is on that layer. Now I can come back into my mask and this is confining that I can only paint in this shape. So if I do white, nope, black in that shape, now it is confined that I'm only painting those. To get rid of your marching ants, you do Command D. And now we can bring our opacity back up. And you can see that we've started to have that interplay of the flowers, the numbers on top, and now looping into the O. Um, so let's see where there's another. So we want, let's look at how they had our words here. Kind of the M starts there. But we want our M to start to be on front, right? So again, I can do Command and click in the T. So now I'm getting outlines, right, of all of my letters. Um, I can go into this mask, and if I want my M to start to show up, I'm using my black paint. I can make my size bigger, 
then I can paint where that letter is. And now the M is on top. I'm going to do the same thing again. So command click into woman up where the T is. Go back into your mask. I'm going to paint black and bring my O and I'm going to bring the W too. In fact, I'm going to bring all the letters and then we're going to bring back the flowers. All right, so I can Command D and that gets rid of it. So now if I look um, and make the decision that I want this flower to overlap. So now I can take my black, paint a smaller brush, and we're gonna switch to white. And I'm going to bring back Now I clicked X and I'm coming back to white and I can fill in a little bit. So that has the flower in the foreground again. Um, where else? So here I'm going to switch to white and I'm gonna have this flower And go up on the up. And that is the essence of this poster. Now we're going to add effects to the text layer. So I think it says we're going to add a shadow. So um, on the woman, if you double click on the right, say drop shadow, now you can see the effect um, 40, multiply 120, 5, 10, 9, contour, okay. We're gonna copy the effects. So you can hold Alt Option and drag your effects to all of the words. You can see that shadow is happening right there. So we're also going to work with an adjustment layer. So at the bottom adjustment layer, you have brightness and contrast. So that's this uh, icon. You're gonna click brightness and contrast. The suggestions are brightness 15, contrast 20. You can see that makes a layer that you need to drag up to the top. So that brightens the whole photo and poster. And then the last important thing is to save as a Photoshop document so that you can edit this later. So you're gonna say file save as, woman up, no spaces in your name, dot PSD, 
only to your computer. Photoshop format, save. All right, so hopefully that gave you a little bit of playing with the pen tool shadows and how you can create an interesting effect playing with foreground and background.